The Warhammer Community Las Vegas Open Preview has treated to a whole host of new models, and who doesn't love Skitari riding mechanical horses? Hello and welcome back to Allspex Tactics, the tactics and strategy focus 40k channel, where we're going to be doing something a little bit different today, and just having a nose through the various pieces of news from the Las Vegas Open. This is really quite a content-rich little rumour drop that they've put out. It turns out there's three new units for this Qatari. They've told us the contents of the next Psychic Awakening box, a big beefy character model for Orcs, revival of a Zote for Blackstone Fortress, finally some Fort World rule updates on the horizon, and a bunch of stuff from Age of Sigmar 2. Today I'm going to focus on the 40k content, as honestly that's what I know best. I'm sure there are plenty of other channels that can tell you a lot more about the Age of Sigmar stuff. So without further ado, let's dive in. First of all, let's look at these new Skitari units. We have two variants of these mechanical horses, the Cerberus Sulphur Hounds and the Cerberus Raiders. I believe that the ones that we're looking at at the moment are the Cerberus Sulphur Hounds. They appear to be vanguard riding mechanical steeds, and their horses all have flamethrowers attached to their muzzles. It looks like these guys will be packing various phosphor weaponry of different sorts, in addition to their crazy flamethrowing horses, so I imagine they'll be a bit more of a skirmish type unit than a full on melee charging unit. We also have a variant for the Rangers. These ones will be the Cerberus Raiders. To me, these look like they're armed with a variant of the Galvanic Rifle. Maybe some sort of assault, multi-shot variant, if I was to guess looking at it. There's also something weird going on with the horse's muzzles again. They don't look like they're armed with out-and-out flamethrowers this time, but they're definitely connected up to some sort of cylinder in the base of the horse. So maybe it might be some sort of chemical projectile weapon. That would certainly sound very Adeptus Mechanicus to me. To be honest, I really like these miniatures. I think they fit in very well with the Skitarian Admech theme, but they're not the only new Admech units. We also have some Taraxi Jump Infantry units. These ones look quite like they're following the same sort of design pattern as the Archaeopter, that recent Skitari flyer that we had teased in a Warhammer community post. These guys have got the same mechanical leg thing going on as most of the Skitari, except these guys have had their legs replaced by some vicious looking bird-like talons. I'd be strongly suspecting that they're going to convert some sort of melee bonus, particularly on the charge, maybe like the Vulture's Claws, the Boss Sag's Truck, very similar, slightly more crude war gear for the Space Orcs. This guy in particular looks like he's armed with some sort of long-barreled melter weapon. The big fuel tank and the long barrel did make me initially think it was a flame, but the head definitely looks very melter to me. Who knows, maybe it might be capable of firing multiple types of fiery ammunition. Either way, Games Workshop have said that these guys are capable of dropping in to eliminate key targets, so I think that pretty much confirms that they're going to have a deep strike special rule, and I'm sure they'll be very mobile once they're on the battlefield. We've got another picture for another two of them here. It looks like the guy on the left might be a bit more of a rank and file type guy. I'm not sure what the weapon he is armed with is, but it certainly looks like a fairly high caliber machine gun. I guess he could be the standard squad armament, or perhaps another special weapon, and we haven't seen the weapons that the grunts are equipped with, if they even are any. The one on the right certainly looks like a squad sergeant or a melee loadout for the same critters. I believe that's a taser goad he's got in his right hand, along with a pistol. So it looks like two sets of fast-moving elite infantry for the Skitari. I hope they'll be pointed pretty decently. I do feel like these are the sort of units, if they do get the points a little bit too high, then they could be fairly useless. Just because I'd imagine that they're not going to be too durable rules-wise, so they, either need, they need to be very cheap in points, or very hard-hitting when they get to grips with the enemy. Either way, I guess we'll see when the book comes out, and Games Workshop have told us the title of the book. It's going to be Engine of War, the next Psychic Awakening book to follow Saga of the Beast, the one that has Space Wolves and Orcs in it. We'll be seeing the Admech and Imperial Knights take on Chaos Demons and Chaos Knights. In the little blurb they say that we'll see the Imperium's soul kick into high gear as these factions battle amidst revelations of hidden subcults, twisted schemes and even more surprises. I think this would be interesting to see what goes on in terms of unique new buffs for these factions. We don't have a whole load of precedent for these. All of them fight fairly differently to the various different factions that we've already seen have Psychic Awakening releases. In particular, I'm curious to see what they do with Imperial and Chaos Knights. they are already models that have a fair few layers of rules on them already, so I'd be interested to see where they're going to go in terms of giving them new and interesting buffs. Up next, though, they have all but revealed the new Gazgul, who'll be coming as part of Saga of the Beast. Here we've got a fair few cool shots of the miniature. I'm liking what I see from the previews that they've given us, but it'd be nice to actually see the whole model when it comes out. 
I'm sure that with a bigger, badder new miniature, Gaskell will be getting some upgraded rules to make him a true force to be feared once more on the tables of the 41st millennium, in a similar vein to what Abaddon had. I'll certainly be covering Saga of the Beast when it comes out. I'm looking forward to reviewing some Space Wolf units in particular. Next we have a meme come to life. Games Workshop have released an actual Zote for use in the game of Blackstone Fortress. I suspect he'll also be given some 40k rules at some point as well, maybe to be allied alongside Tyranids or Gene Steeler Colts potentially. The reason that I think that they've brought this guy back is because over the last few years it's become a very popular thing for every new guest. For when Games Workshop reveals things, for someone to write, Zotes confirmed, Games Workshop are bringing back an entire faction of Zotes, and much hilarity ensues, because obviously that's not what they're teasing. Zotes are a race from a long long time ago in Warhammer 40k, who in the background heralded the coming of the Tyranid Hive fleet, before essentially being retconned and completely unsupported by Games Workshop for literally decades. So this is Games Workshop giving a little bit of a nice head nod to the fans. We saw them do a similar with the squats when they released a squat mercenary for Necromunda recently. So it's not really too surprising that they've come out with this guy. He does look like quite a menacing individual. To my mind, that technological gun that he has in his right hand is quite reminiscent of flesh borers that are carried by Tyranid Termagants, but obviously from a mechanical rather than biological perspective. It'll be interesting if he does get 40k rules, and who he's allowed to take to the battle with. Next we have some of the biggest news from a rules point of view, in that Forge World models are going to start getting updated rules again. I'm not entirely sure why this hasn't been the case throughout most of 8th edition. In the past, Forge World would release Imperial Armour books, or various other campaign books with rules for their miniatures. They were really quite expensive, but they were certainly popular with the people who bought Forge World models, because in all honesty, if you're buying a lot of Forge World models, money probably isn't the biggest issue for you. I'm not certain whether it was the Forge World design team or the Games Workshop rules team that came out with the index rules for the Forge World miniatures, I suspect it was two different teams, because you did get a ton of weird discrepancies between the Forge World miniatures and the standard Games Workshop design team miniatures, such as the Forge World Knights having a slightly different rule to the Games Workshop ones, for example. Since then, Forge World models haven't really received any update and have been really quite neglected, which is a bit of a shame seeing as every other model in 40k pretty much has got an update somewhere along the line now. All of the old indexes for the Games Workshop models have now been superseded by their codexes, or other data sheets elsewhere. The big news today is that they're going to be coming out with a series of new books for the various Forge World miniatures. I'm sure they'll be tying in existing Forge World releases alongside them, as they have actually come out with a fair few new miniatures for 40k. In the meantime, things like the Armager Moiraxes and the Carnadon tank for the Imperial Guard. I think it will certainly be interesting to see where these go. We really don't know what they'll be getting at the moment, but it seems reasonable we could be looking at some chapter traits for the various Forge World specific chapters, such as Minotaurs or Carcaradons, perhaps finally getting rules for the 30k Mechanicus models that have been definitely one of the things that fans have requested the most for a very long time. But I think one of the best things for me will be that they might actually take a proper look at all of the Forge World miniatures that they have in existence and actually try and make a bit more of a points adjustment for them to make them a bit more usable and more balanced. There are certainly some Forge World models that are very strong for their points costs. Things like this Leviathan Dreadnought is chief among them, and other things like Relic Contemptor Dreadnoughts and Chaplain Dreadnoughts are certainly very good for what they do. As a rule though, the majority of things that Forge World sells at the moment generally tend to be subpar rules-wise compared with Games Workshop things. Forge World just produced so many Astra Militarum tanks for example, and at the moment in the competitive game we don't see any of them run, because pretty well all of them are directly superseded by one of the entries in the main codex. Same goes for Death Corps of Krieg really, a really iconic and cool miniature line that just happens to be paying one point extra for all of its guardsmen, and has a lot of other overcosted options. So I personally really like the idea that they're going to be redoing some Forge World books, I'll certainly be watching that with interest, and I'll be covering any Forge World books they come out with for the factions that I know. Just as an aside, they've also shown off this new White Scars character, Kinzar, in a pretty snazzy looking new character miniature for the Horus Heresy. It was a pretty awesome looking miniature. Finally, at least for 40k related purposes, they've also shown off a short trailer of Angels of Death, I believe a mini TV series that Games Workshop have been producing, to bring some Space Marines to the big screen. I'll put a link in the description below to the actual trailer for the series, as a couple of action shots don't really do it that much justice. It looks pretty grimdark and stylized, and it looks like the Blood Angels will be facing off against some Gene Stealer cults. I'll be interested to see if that actually turns into a success, 
bringing 40k convincingly to life I think has always been a bit of a challenge that would require a lot of investment in terms of snazzy CGI, thought out plots and good voice acting, so I guess we'll see whether this one takes off, and I wish them the best of luck with it. Like I said, there are plenty of Age of Sigmar releases here too. There are new, more normal elves for a change, a battle tone for Seraphon, and some new Wormspat miniatures for Warhammer Underworlds. So I fully recommend going and having a look over on the Warhammer community site if you're interested in those. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be returning to our regular 40k tactics content later today with a review of the Collector's Assassin. So feel free to check back later if you'd like to see that or subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you're interested in more 40k tactics content. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys in the next video.